ever stopped yourself taking action towards your goals because you've already decided ahead of time that this won't work for me or that success only happens to other people. It's tempting to do because when we do that we get to play the victim or the martyr. We get to avoid taking personal responsibility. We get to avoid the hard work. We don't have to risk rejection or failure. And so we give up in advance. We fail ahead of time. Welcome to week three of our series of breaking through the SOS mindset. Breaking through stuck, overwhelmed, and today, skeptical. We're going to talk about overcoming your inner skeptic. The trouble is, when we give in to our skeptic and we believe those thoughts, that success is for others, or that we can't do this, it won't work out for us, that we never get to our desired goals and dreams. It leaves us caught up in the same old thought patterns and actions that got us here. We already know that they don't lead to our goals or our dreams, or else we'd already have them, we'd have achieved them already. The results we see in the world right now are the manifestations and the projections of the thinking from our past. So if we want to create something new, something we haven't achieved before, we actually have to practice new thinking. We can't keep believing that little voice in our mind. It's the one that's kept us here, playing small, not living our best life. So how do you overcome this inner skeptic? Well, I want to share with you today um, five techniques, starting with the idea of switching your language. The language we use in our mind and in our words actually programs our brain. So watch out for subtle key undermining phrases like, this won't work for me. And when you notice them, change them. So instead of asking yourself or suggesting to yourself that this won't work for you, what if you instead asked, what if this works for me? Or how could this work for me? Notice the difference. Notice the way it feels. So instead of this won't work for me, switch to what if this does work for me? How could I make it work for me? I'll give you another example. Sometimes you'll be going along and you'll hear something new or you'll have to do something. And often I talk about in coaching this idea of things that are repetitive, that we do them again and again. That's how we make habits. It's how we create beliefs by thinking thoughts repeatedly. And so sometimes your inner skeptic will go, I've heard this before. I already know how to do this. Watch out for that phrase. It's got you into a fixed mindset instead of a growth mindset. So once again, you need to switch language. So instead of, I already know this, switch to, what can I learn from this right now? What can I learn from this right now? And just notice how much easier it is, how much more potential there is in there. So step one, watch out for those phrases, challenge that inner voice, and switch your language on purpose. Number two, stop looking to your past for evidence for your future. When we're talking about our future, we're talking about what is possible, what hasn't happened yet, what is, um, which doesn't exist yet. And so we might not have that evidence for it at all. And of course, your inner skeptic is going to use this to go, see, do you know what? It's not going to work. There's no evidence. 
that you should be believing that you should succeed or that can, things can be different from the way they are. But that's actually the point. It doesn't exist yet. We're going into something new. And when we look for evidence, we're looking in our past. We're looking for what has already happened. And that thinking has only got us here. In the future, all outcomes are possible, including the one that you want. So why not ask, what can I do differently now? How are my circumstances different? How am I different from last time I tried this? How can I use this past experience to change? You can also look back, of course, and say, what can I learn from it? If it didn't work in the past, how do I now adapt or evolve or change what I'm doing so that I can succeed in the future? So stop looking to your past. Or if you're there, think about how to use it to move you forward and then look into the future. That's where all things are possible. Step three, just act, just start, just do it anyway. Just ignore that voice and just go, oh, well, I'm getting into action. Remember, it is in our actions in the present that produce the results in the future, right? Everything we've got now is because of something we've done in the past, right? Which always was a course of our thinking. In our actions now, we create the future. So take notice whether you're in the act of creation, acting towards your goals and your dreams, or whether you're allowing that inner a skeptic, that inner critic to keep you in avoidance in procrastination, in staying where you are, right? Are you stagnating? All it takes to move forward towards your goal is action. And sometimes it's perfectly normal to realize that, you know, maybe I can't see all the way to the destination yet. That's okay. Think about traveling. You can only see as far as the horizon, but maybe there's a hill or a mountain or a forest. And you can't see all the way to where you want to be. Well, does that mean you should just give up and not make the journey? Just stay where you are? Or do you start the journey? Do you start walking? Do you travel through the forest, up the mountain, over the hill? Because when you get there, you get if you take action, you move towards your goal, and then suddenly a new vista opens out before you. New possibilities become available that weren't there before because you got into action. So sometimes just ignore that voice. Hear it and just go, huh, yeah, that's okay. I'm doing it anyway. So switch your language. Look to your future. Get into action. Number four, set your intention to succeed. Why not do something? Or if you want to adopt my philosophy, why not do everything as though it will succeed? Why not just assume everything you're going to do is going to lead you towards your goals? Challenge those underlying assumptions because sometimes we have those beliefs that we can't, as we said, and that's going to stop us from achieving at all. So just change it. What if you just decided that you couldn't possibly fail? And the beautiful thing is, if you keep taking action and learning and um, evolving and adapting and trying again with new wisdom and experience based on what's happened, even if things didn't work out exactly the way you wanted, then if you just keep taking action, if you keep moving forward, you will succeed. I so often in these moments think about the story about um, Edison and inventing the light bulb. You know, it's not that he found one thing that worked. His quote is that he tried 999 things that didn't work. It was the thousandth try that got success.
And I love this idea, even if the numbers aren't exact. But the truth is, we just have to keep going, right? Just because it hasn't succeeded this time, it didn't work out the way we want it to be, doesn't mean it won't work. Doesn't mean we can't have the life of our dreams, that we can't achieve our goals. Of course we can. Such a fundamental shift that we can and we will. All we have to do is keep taking action. And if that feels just a little bit too hard or a little bit too much, then why not try technique number five? And that is try it on for size. Like a new outfit. Or like an actor rehearsing for a role. Why not just try on this way of thinking and just pretend? Remember, it's the future. We're making it up anyway. So we can make believe. I love that phrase because we really can make ourselves believe. You can pretend to be the person who believes that you will succeed. You can pretend to be the person who does the action that you've been avoiding or procrastinating on. You can step into that role and try it out and practice it and live from that space as though it's real. What I love about that is that your brain doesn't really know the difference between reality and imagination. So it just starts to train in those neural pathways. We start to make it normal. And what's really good is if you just try it on for a little while, try it on for science, like an experiment, then if it doesn't work for you, do you know what? You can always go back to your old thinking in a week or a month, if you want. But what if it does work? What if it does move you towards your goals and your dreams? What if you can do it? What if it could be fun? So there's my top five tips. Switch your language. Stop looking to your past. Get into action. Set your underlying intention to succeed. Act as if you cannot fail. And if all else fails, just try it on for size. I'd love to know, with that in mind, what will you decide is possible for you now? What would you be doing if you knew you couldn't fail to achieve your goal? And how do you overcome your inner skeptic. Why not start challenging them right now? If you want more help transitioning into the life that you want to be living rather than the life that you have, then remember you can always sign up for a free exploratory coaching session with me on my website. Go to livemorelife.com.au and click on free exploratory session. Fill in the form and I'll be in touch to help you out. Talk to you soon.